It's time for one of the classics. Hi everyone, my name's Jake. Welcome to The Kitchen Scrap, where I'm currently challenging myself to learn to survive on British World War II rations for an entire year. Is there any way to shut him up? Now, first of all, I do apologize for the somewhat inconsistency of my videos. I'm currently juggling two jobs, but moving forward, I really do want to try and be a little bit more proactive with this because you guys have been awesome. So I'm going to endeavor to put out at least one video a week moving forward. Thank you for your patience. For today's recipe, we're going to be tackling a classic, an all-time great leek and potato soup. I have been craving it so much, even though it's technically not soup weather at all because it's been disgustingly hot here in Melbourne. We're in mid-March, it's technically autumn now. We just had three consecutive days of 31 degrees. Last weekend, we had three consecutive days where it was 39 degrees, but I don't care because I need that leek and potato soup. So the recipe I'm using today comes from Marguerite Patton's Feeding the Nation. But let's just talk about Marguerite Patton for a moment, shall we? Because she lived quite an extraordinary life and she was somewhat of a central figure on the home front during the war. So she was born on the 4th of November in 1915 and passed away just a few months shy of her 100th birthday in 2015. When her father passed away, I think she was around the age of 12 when this happened, her mother had to go back to work to support the family. And this is when Marguerite started cooking to help out her mother. In her book, Feeding the Nation, she mentions that she was working as a home economist for the electrical industry when war broke out. She says at the time she was already used to traveling around to various places and giving demonstrations on how to cook and prepare delicious and lavish recipes to large groups of people. So when the Ministry of Food started publishing food facts in 1940s, she used their hints together with her own knowledge to create economical, healthy recipes. And once again, began traveling around to different villages in the evenings to demonstrate how to make best of the rationed ingredients, especially for those with little to no experience in cooking. You have to remember at the time, there were whole generations of people just beginning to become of age when they had the stresses of war thrust upon them. A lot of people wouldn't have even had basic cooking skills, let alone trying to make best of these rationed ingredients. And that's when Marguerite stepped in. Eventually her ideas were broadcast on a BBC radio program called The Kitchen Front during the war to help reach the masses. Now she was quite popular and after the war ended, she appeared on countless radio programs and eventually TV shows as well. In fact, she is arguably known as one of the first celebrity chefs, a title which she deplored for most of her life. She was an incredible woman with an amazing life story and apparently she has published over 170 books that's mind blowing to me. For this recipe, you will need two pints of vegetable stock or water, four medium leeks, thinly sliced. Now I only have two leeks, so I'm just going to bulk up the potatoes. 12 ounces of potatoes. So I'm probably gonna double that because I wanna make a big batch. Salt and pepper, a tablespoon of chopped parsley, a little cayenne pepper, delicious. And one ounce of margarine, if you can spare it. So let's get cooking. So I found some old and withering spring onions in my fridge, so it's time to use these up. So I'm gonna chuck those in. I have two leeks, I've already topped these. So now I'm just going to prep these veggies before we start cooking. Okay, so the veggies are prepped. I just cut up and rinsed the leeks really well. We've got a good helping of parsley, the spring onion, the potato. When it comes to the potato skins, this time I'm not chucking them into the stock bag. I'm gonna show you my favorite thing to do with potato skins shortly, which will go really great with this recipe. Okay, so I've just got some fat heating up in the pan now. The recipe actually says to bring your stock to a boil and then add all of your ingredients. But I'm just going to fry off the leeks and the spring onions first, just to get them going and help build up that flavor profile. Chuck those in, in the spring onions. So I'm just gonna cook these down for a few minutes. I love the smell of leeks cooking so much. Next, I'm just going to add the potatoes to get them going. This is our leftover stock from when we made the Lord Walton pie. So I just pulled it out of the freezer and defrosted it. So we're just going to add that. And we're definitely going to have to top this up given the amount of potatoes that I have. So just top it up with some boiling water. Just going to make sure that we season it really well. So starting with about half a tablespoon of salt. You can always add more. Some black pepper and some cayenne pepper. Now, of course you don't have to include this. It is very spicy, but I like a bit of spice. That's pretty much it for now. So we're just going to bring this up to a boil and let it simmer for about 25 minutes. So I'm just going to put the lid back on. 
leave it slightly ajar. Oh, I just rubbed my eye and got cayenne pepper in it. Nice one, Jake. All right, so this has been simmering away for about 20, 25 minutes. It is now ready. Now this isn't actually part of the recipe, but I've been craving a nice, thick, creamy, potato and leek soup. So what I've done is I've used some of the milk powder, which is still going strong. I've mixed up about, I don't know, two pints worth, and I'm just going to add this in. Totally optional, of course you don't have to do this. I was telling someone in the comments section just the other day, I am totally converted when it comes to milk powder. Now it's not something I would turn to if I felt like a glass of milk, but this has saved my bacon so many times, especially when I'm cooking. Exhibit A. It's fantastic to have on hand in case you're in a pinch. I think I will continue to stock some in my fridge once the year of rationing is over. And the recipe does call for an ounce of margarine, again, if you can spare it. So we're just going to add that. That's just vegan Nuttalex. So chuck that in, give it a stir, let it melt down. I wish you could smell this, it's gorgeous. And I'm just gonna give this a little taste test to check for seasoning. I am just gonna add a little bit more salt, so probably a teaspoon worth there. Just a little bit more cayenne pepper, because I do enjoy a good kick of cayenne. Give it another test. There it is, that's perfect. Now while I do wanna leave this soup a little bit chunky, I am going to give it a bit of a whiz with an immersion blender. Now I know they didn't have these in the 1940s, to which I say, Oh, come on, Brenda, it's the 90s for God's sakes. They totally would have used them if they had them. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a whiz. That'll do. That's perfect, there's still lots of potato chunks. All right, final taste test, that is Tremendous. I totally forgot to add the parsley. Just give that a bit of a stir. So when it comes to the potato skins, I washed the potatoes really well before I peeled them and I've just had them sitting in a bowl of vinegar. And we're gonna bake these in the oven to make crispy potato chips, which actually acts really well as a soup topper, kind of like a crouton, but you can just eat them on their own. If you're not a fan of the salt and vinegar flavor, you can simply rinse the potato skins off. I won't be doing that. So because I've used so many potatoes for this soup, I have enough to make a batch of this now. But if I'm just using a couple of potatoes here and there throughout the week. Basically all I do, I have an airtight container of vinegar that I keep in my fridge and I just keep adding the potato skins to it until I have enough to make a batch of them. So all I am going to do is just put them into a fresh bowl and I'm just going to give them a, a very light coating with some extra virgin olive oil. I've switched to this now. Add a decent helping of salt. That's probably about half a tablespoon. Mix it all together. So all the skins are coated. Next, I want to line them on some trays. Now these pizza trays with the holes on the bottom work beautifully for this. If you don't have these, it's totally fine. Just whack them on a normal tray, but you will have to toss them about halfway through. So I'm just going to spread these out. Shake off any excess liquid as you go. Try and get them on a single layer. So my oven has been preheating at 200. I'm just gonna whack these in for about 20 minutes. I should also mention, be prepared if you do the vinegar version of it, especially if they've been soaking in vinegar for a few days in the fridge first. Once you open up the oven after they've been baking, you will be hit with the strongest vinegar bomb you can possibly imagine. But the smell doesn't linger for too long and it's totally worth it. Meanwhile, the potato skins are finished. So I let these cook in the oven for about 25 minutes. And um, are you ready for this crunch? Mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah. That salt and vinegar flavor is bomb. I could sit down and eat this whole bowl right now, but I won't. Just keep them in an airtight container. You don't have to refrigerate them, but just consume them within a few days. Once again, we've wasted nothing. Check it out. So we have a gorgeous bowl of potato and leek soup, a slice of the wartime loaf from Carolyn's website, and we've got some crispy potato skin croutons for the top. I absolutely cannot wait to get stuck into this. What a joy. 
So my mum actually came up with a good idea and suggested that I should provide a cost breakdown of each meal. So obviously prices are going to differ depending on where you live in the world, but I thought it might be a good exercise to kind of compare the cost of our groceries, especially fresh produce, because it costs a bomb here in Melbourne at the moment. It's ridiculous. So we've broken it down and the total cost of this amount of soup was $12.20, which is actually a lot more than I was expecting. Now I made a lot of soup and I did get eight full servings of this, which means it cost $1.52 per serving, which is not too bad, but I think you could stretch it out even more if you were having it as a soup starter instead of a main. Now, as you can see, the leeks cost a bomb because they're not in season here in Melbourne at the moment, but I really wanted them. Worked out that it cost me 60 cents worth of milk powder. When it came to the salt, pepper, you know, general seasonings, and a little bit of oil to get those leeks going at the beginning, it's really difficult to work out exactly how much that costs because we use such tiny amounts of it. So we just allocated 10 cents for that. But if you think about this, if you grew your own leeks, leeks, spring onions, potatoes, and parsley. This would cost next to nothing. <laughs> the vegetable stuff was free. We made it ourselves. You know, as much as I love city living, it is my dream to one day move back to the country and grow my own. Now, before we wrap up, I have to say a very big thank you to some very special people. Liz and David from their awesome channel, Loving Life on Less. Thank you so much. A couple of weeks ago, they gave me the most incredible shout out on their channel. It was truly so kind and generous and thoughtful of you cannot thank you enough. It actually brought a tear to my eye when I was watching it. Now, during their shout out, they encouraged their wonderful audience to pop over here to my little corner of YouTube to say hello and wow, did you guys ever. So thank you so much everyone. Welcome. It's so lovely to have you here and I've enjoyed reading all of your comments and starting to get to know all of you a little bit. So thank you to everyone for all of the support. It really does mean a lot. Now for anyone that hasn't seen that channel, Loving Life Unless, I will link it below. I highly recommend that you go and check it out. They have a treasure trove of amazing content on their channel. Thousands of money saving tips, frugal living ideas, recipes, and my personal favorite, the documentaries that they make, ranging from the depression era through to the 40s and the 50s and beyond. Highly recommend that you go and check them out. Now, if you will indulge me for a moment, I would like to pay it forward and return the favor. I recently discovered a wonderful new little YouTube channel. Her name is Lara, she lives in Scotland. Her YouTube channel is called Frugal Full. We actually started our YouTube channels around the same time. She started in December last year and I was around mid-January. So we're both learning this whole world of YouTube together. So her channel is all about living frugally as well. She's posting lots of videos about budgeting, meal planning, lots of recipe videos. I think she has an allotment as well, so she'll be growing her own. She's currently undertaking a year long, no spend, low spend experiment. And she posts far more regularly than I do. <laughs> I've got to keep up, you know. Just like me, she's just getting started with her YouTube channel, so let's go show her some love. And there's one more special mention that I would like to make. Now, this next one really tugs on my heartstrings. One of his videos just randomly appeared in my YouTube feed a few weeks ago. Now, his name is Avery, and that is also the name of his YouTube channel. It has nothing to do with food or being frugal. He posts every single day. Now, they're usually just very short 30, 40, 50 second clips, mostly just him checking in to say hello and good morning and asking you to comment down below who your favorite YouTubers are with Avery being number one. It's his biggest dream to become a famous YouTuber and I think you know with the beautiful wonderful awesome and supportive community that we've got going on here maybe we can help make that happen. He's such a beautiful person and I know it would really mean a lot to him and me if we could go and support him and help make his dream come true. Also, don't forget to check out some of his shorts because he posts some dancing videos and he's got some moves. <laughs> Last but not least, if you are interested in rationing at all, I highly recommend that you come and join the Facebook group that Carolyn created, Living on World War II Russians, the 1940s Experiment. There are so many wonderful people in that group. I've already made lots of new friends. It truly is a great place to connect with people and get a little daily dose of history. Come and play with us forever and ever and ever. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching everyone. And until next time, keep calm and eke your leeks by adding more potato.